Innovative businesses see every day as an opportunity to create something new. Dell Technologies advisors are here with tools and expertise to help you do incredible things. Because Dell Technologies believes there's an innovator in all of us. Learn more about smart PCs powered by the Intel vPro platform that's built for business. Find tech that's right for you by calling a Dell Technologies advisor at 877-ASK-DELL. It's time for the B-A-Q-A-A, -A -A, the B-A-Q-A, what you say? The B-A-Q-A with Mandate, the B-A-Q-A with Tiffany, the B-A-Q-A-A. -A. Hey. Welcome to Bride Ambition. Question and answers. You have questions, we have some answers. Although we're not your mama, your cousin, your financial advisor, or your lawyer, your but we are two very smart, brilliant, dare I say, brown girls. Who know a little mm -hmm. thing about career, money, personal finances, you know what I'm saying? Entrepreneurship. So, you know, we're here to answer some questions. <laughs> well, it's a dead of winter. It's a dead of winter, so I don't know if I still fit in the brown category. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I'm so pale. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're, you're brown in spirit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> anyway, we have some lovely questions. If you guys want to be... Um, have your questions answered on the show, just slide into our DMs on IG. We're at Brown Ambition Podcast, or you can email us, brownambitionpodcast at gmail.com. Um, yeah, so let's get into it. Our first question comes from Taylor, who says, I just got engaged and I'm looking for advice on how to start planning financially. We currently live together and split our household bills 50 50. Depends on the season and if we use the AC or not. Okay. <laughs> Con Ed is crazy. We take turns getting groceries for the house, although I shop a bit more since I'm working in the office and don't always pack a lunch. We make just about the same amount of money um, and have kept our finances separate. I'm planning to do premarital counseling with my fiance and wonder if financials will be brought up in those convos. We both have trauma around a parent abusing household finances. I know I prefer to keep all household bills in one bucket and the rest separate. How do you all start to share finances with partners? Were there any strategies you employed to start saving for a wedding? Do you have recommendations on the best or easiest joint accounts? Ally keeps popping up. Thanks for any insights you can provide. Y'all are the bomb. Ooh, first of all, Thank congrats, Tay Tay. It's wedding. Yeah, it's engagement season. Congrats. <laughs> oh my goodness. This takes me back. Yes. To early How'd you Mandy start? How'd you introduce like combining finances with your husband? <sighs> too soon. <laughs> I was like, I was in my, um, I had just, you know, when we met in 2014, I had been a few years into my career as a personal finance journalist, poor husband or Enrique at the time. Um, cause I was just, I was kind of preachy. I was very preachy. I used to really put people off my friends and family. Cause I'd be like, what you should do is I'm just like a Hermione. I just know it all. And I want everyone to know. And I had a good place. Like I was coming from, a, you know, I wanted mm -hmm. to, um, help, but I hadn't yet learned how to wait for them to ask me for help. <laughs> but I remember our early, before moving in together, which we moved in together less than a year after dating, I think, um, just because rent, you know, like leases in New York kind of rush you into decisions sooner than you may otherwise rush. But um, we had dinner and I broached the subject of um, like our finances at that dinner. Um, and it was fine. Like we talked about splitting rent 50 50. We talked about how much do you earn? Here's what I earn. And also moving in together, like we talked about, is this a long term? Do you see a future with me? You know, I didn't want to live with him if he didn't think he'd one day marry me. Mm -hmm. Bless his heart. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I would say around that time, I just got more feisty. I was like, show me your credit score. Mm -hmm. I want to see your credit score. Why don't you show me your credit score? And I think it was more my, like, I think he might have just shown me or told me if I hadn't been so much like, we must find, if you don't show me, you don't trust me, you don't love me. I was just a little extra. So yeah, I, I had my ups and downs early in our relationship, kind of talking about finances. Um, we did do premarital counseling, but finances didn't come up. Mm. I think you're going to have to like bring that up yourselves mm -hmm. um, as a topic that you want to work on. Like set the intention of in therapy, this will be one of the things we talk about. Um, we more talked about like, I don't even remember. God, honestly, I think it was premarital counseling is fine, but I almost feel like don't forget about that when you get like yeah. year five, you know, six, seven, like you need more counseling. So we started counseling again just earlier this year. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, that was 
that was our early our early arguments about it were around me just being a little too intense. Yo, Mandy, there's a reason why we are friends because that <laughs> mirrors my story almost to the T, <laughs> including the in the the credit score. He was like, I don't know. I was like, let's sign up for Credit Karma right now. <laughs> Like, give me your laptop. Girl, like, literally, fuck? I did that. Girl, <laughs> oh, it's a miracle that they put up with the foolishness. Anyway, yeah. so to Mandy's point, we were, I was also aggressive and very annoying. Um, I was just like <laughs> with my family and friends saying, I was like, girl, I know the things. You know, now yeah. I don't do that much. <laughs> um, yeah. I was like, you know, because also there was just a lot of things that I knew that he didn't know. So, for example, he had gotten a secured card. And he was like, oh, they told me to use, like, you know, run it up and just pay a little bit a month. And I was like, who told you that? The people who are charging you interest? No. Mm-hmm. I was like, pay it off in full. Do you have the money? It was maybe like four or $500. He said, yeah. He paid it off. Credit score jumped over 100 points because he didn't have um, much credit history. So when you don't have a ton of credit history, one really great decision can make a huge impact. Because mm-hmm. your credit history is an average of your choices. So if you only have two grades, one A w- will make a B and A, you know? Um, and so, so what we started to do though is, so I had to learn because my aggressive ways were not working. Um, mm-hmm. I remember he used to call me budget needs to bully. He said, if everybody <laughs> only knew you are budget needs to bully. Yeah. Everyone else um, thinks we're so nice, but partners I, though. I know. Like, Yo, he was know like, the, the world needs to know. I was like, whatever. Um, yeah. so, but I learned that my bullying ways were actually not working. So yeah. I learned to find what I used to call the common denominator, like something that we both agreed upon without any push. So in the beginning, mm-hmm. I noticed that like the easiest common denominator for Jarell and I was Alyssa, you know, my bonus daughter, that like if he spent money on something I thought was frivolous, I'm like, oh, that's fine. But we also put money aside for Alyssa, right? And he would, because there's never a time that he would ever say, I'd rather the sneakers than put something aside for Alyssa. So he'd be like, oh, you're right. And so mm-hmm. that's in the beginning to kind of loosen him up to make the financial choices that, quite honestly, I thought were the right ones. That you wanted um, him to make. Yes. That I would like, you know, I would it's like the comment and I would, it, it was like, there's never any pushback when it comes to Alyssa. And then I added a new one because I, I was traveling and he'd be like, oh, I want to, you know, uh, travel with you. And I'd be like, oh, okay, well, I'm going to open up this online only savings account and you can open up a separate one, which he did. And when I put a money away for savings, you should too. So that way the next trip we go on, we can go together. So there's never a pushback on vacation. And so I did that, quite honestly, for a long time before I was able to broach other things. Like, I think your car note is too high. Maybe we should surrender the car. I think we should start saving for a wedding. I think we should start saving for a house. By the time we bought this house that I live in now, we were able to pay for it cash because it was like 50% off because it was a foreclosure. We had gotten to a really great space where we were on the same page financially because we had started with those common denominators and then learned to discuss what are our other goals and what do we need to do to reach it, you know? And so Mm -hmm. I learned to change my tone, you know, not to be such a budgetista bully. And he learned to like uh, um, be open to say, oh, this is for the betterment of both of us. So I don't know what Mandy, um, you know, does now, but when Jarrell was here, we had like a, we had an R's. And we had our um, each other's. So I had my own checking. I had my own savings. He had his own mm-hmm. checking. He had his own savings. And then we jointly had joint checking, joint savings. The checking account was like the bills account for the house. So like we both contributed. He largely contributed to the bills account. And then um, I largely more contributed to our joint savings account, you know, because he had this thing where he was like, I want to pay the bills. And I said, okay. Mm-hmm. So there wasn't a ton left over for savings, but that's where I contributed the most you know? And so like, you know, those are some yeah. of the choices. So I'll give you an example too. Like I made significantly more than, than Jarrell to be candid. He never made over $60,000 a year and, you know, I can bring home seven figures. And so there's a big discrepancy, you know, and we talked about how do we navigate that? Cause sometimes, you know, for many men, and I understand it can be um, a hard thing for the ego to swallow. His biggest thing was, I don't want to live off of what you bring in, Tiffany. I want to be able to maintain our lifestyle with what I bring in. And so- Which is really the, smart, honestly. Yes, it yeah. is, honestly. And I love that about it because he could have easily been like, girl, when can I retire? You yeah. know? So what we did, for example, for the house was, at first we were looking at houses to get homes to get um mortgages. But honestly, what, what his income could could cover, it wasn't the kind of house that I wanted to live in. 
in a neighborhood I wanted to live in. So we found this house. It was a foreclosure and it was like perfect with the savings that we joint saved, you know, which where I did my most contributing. I had the hundred and eighty thousand dollars there. We used it to buy the house. So now there's no mortgage, but his income could cover taxes, insurance, utilities. You see what I mean? So it's like mm-hmm. he still got to pay the bills, but in a way that preserved what I wanted, which is this beautiful home in this nice neighborhood, but it preserved, I pay the bills and I can maintain our lifestyle, you know? And so like, yeah. those are the types of conversations that you want to start to have. Like, where do you want to live? Um, we each got our own allowance and we, and we could have spent it however we wanted because I know we were both contributing to the household. We each had our own savings. You could do what you wanted because as long as the, the bills were paid and then the joint savings were saved, that excess money is yours to do what you want with. So I learned to leave him alone when it came to that. So those are some of the things that we did. And, you know, hopefully that'll be helpful. It's going to be just a constant conversation. You guys should be talking mm-hmm. about money always. Something that Mandy actually introduced me to him. Mandy, when you started working with Helen, you know, I didn't have a financial advisor at the time. And you said that Helen helped you kind of like be a tiebreaker, like you and husband, yeah. you know? And so I suggest that too, finding a financial advisor that you meet, you're meet, you meeting with, especially in the beginning regularly, because they will help to walk through your goals and how do you reach them together. Um, and that way he feels he's heard and you're, you're, you feel like you're heard too. Yeah, absolutely. And it just basically like he listens to her and <laughs> to me, even though she's saying what I could say, you know, but obviously she has way more training than I do as a financial planner. But yeah, I, I that's kind of what I was getting at too with premarital counseling. Like they're not going to be able to give you the financial advice, but they can help you learn how to approach it if it becomes like this really, you mentioned both having trauma, um, financial trauma in the past. So like if it's really tough to even get the conversation started, maybe it's good to start in a premarital counseling and then work your way up to like getting a financial planner. And then um, but I would just say like, you'll find the system that works for you. Mm-hmm. Um, for us, it's, it is one joint um, like household expense account and one joint savings. And then we have our separate accounts where we, you know, have money for whatever we want to buy. Mm-hmm. Um, oh, she asked any strategies you employ to start saving for a wedding. Yeah, <laughs> We moved in with his parents mm-hmm. and cut our, I had never been earning more in my career. I think I was about to take a job making like, um, 40 K more than what I was earning at the time. Mm. And for some reason I snapped and I'm like, we have to save all this extra money. <laughs> like, <laughs> I don't want to, you know, just get a nicer apartment. We, we moved in with his parents into a tiny apartment on way in, uh, in wood upper Manhattan, um, and gave up our lovely two bedroom apartment in Queens and basically lived off of, um, you know, we were able to save the majority of our income, which helped, mm. You don't have to go that drastic, but I was hell bent on not having debt for my wedding. And I was also hell bent on having a gorgeous wedding. (laughs) So if you both want that, it's easier to make that decision together. We both really wanted a nice wedding. So I think it was easier for him to say yes to my crazy idea. (laughs) No, that was lasted. We lasted like six or eight months there, I think. We saved like $12,000. It was nice. (laughs) Yeah, no, that's a good idea. We had to get out of there. Same thing like like Mandy, we lived really simply. Like Jarrell was a super for housing and we lived basically on campus. I mean, it was a cute, we had a, a townhouse, but rent was, because he worked there, it was severely discounted to like 900 bucks a month, 920. Mm. And so we lived there and we saved and we both agreed. Um, and this is not something you have to do, but we would both agree. Because I mean, I got married at 37, so I didn't necessarily want like a big old wedding. And so we decided, do we want to spend this money on a wedding or do we want to set aside to purchase a home um, together? And so we said, let's have a simple wedding. So we did Justice of the Peace. A friend of mine has this really nice restaurant that she closed down, Vonda, for us. And Mandy was there. Um, And so we just like, that's what we did. My mom was distraught, of course, because I'm Nigerian. And how dare I not have an extravagant ignorant wedding. It was my um, favorite Nigerian wedding. It lasted. <laughs> well, it was, I even, wasn't even a wedding. It was just a reception. Yes. I loved it. it honestly, it was hour. the best. <laughs> my friend Andrea, um, she made my dress. She's like, a, she's like, now she's like some famous like wedding dress designer. She like won like making the cut on um with Hattie, Heidi Klum and Tim Gunn. But like, yeah, I mean, she was big then too, Pantora Bridal. She made my dress and gifted it to me. My my friend JP did our video for free. Honestly, it was like the, I don't think I spent $2,000, like including Alyssa's dress, Jarrell's clothes from we, like Banana Republic, you know, all everything, um, the photos. And, but I, it was beautiful because after it was said and done, we purchased, 
I wouldn't have had the money to purchase the home cash. I didn't know at the time that this house was going to come up. But not only did we purchase the home cash, we paid off my student loan debt, $50,000. And we were able to pay off my parents' house, $120,000. And so for us, it was like, and for, for all partnered people, you have to decide what's your desired outcome jointly, as well as individually, and make the decision from there. So... To, to yeah. Mandy's point, like, you know, if you can reduce how you're living, however that looks and set aside. Um, right now, Citizens Bank, we don't, I don't work with them or anything, but they, because Ally, I think, is like 3.3. So I moved my money from Ally to Citizens Bank as 3.7. Um, mm. So like, you know, yeah, rates are a, going up. Yes. But like joint bank accounts, you just want to be sure they're really easy and simple to connect your external accounts to, especially yes. if like, unless you're both going to move all your stuff to that one bank account, which would be easier. But like Enrique has a bank account that I don't have and I have my personal one with Ally and then we have the joint. So as long as you can do auto transfers, that has worked for us. It took a while, but I was like, dude, automatically transfer money into Ally each month so that I know we'll have enough to like get daycare covered and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, if, for your savings, for sure, I would just choose the bank with the highest interest rate because mm-hmm. um, you want that to be easy, easy to get to, but not too easy to yes. get to. Um, but yeah, good luck on good this luck. journey. And congratulations, yes. Taylor, yes. on your engagement. Keep, up, keep up with us. We'd love to hear because child, you know, we old, my, well, I, I, well, yeah, I was gonna say we're old married couple, married um ladies now, but I'm like, <laughs> I don't know. How, do I still feel married? I don't you're a rich auntie. I know. I am a rich auntie. The first time someone <laughs> said like, oh, you're not married anymore. I was like, oh, shut up. Um, oh, but now I'm just yeah. like, yeah. Now I'm like, well, I'm a rich but auntie. But you guys were together so long. Like yeah. you can't just, you know, look at your relationship as the years you were married. You know, yes. you guys had a storybook romance. <laughs> it's always storybook when someone's like, honestly, it was pretty awesome. But yes, mm. like, yes, I am a rich auntie now. So we'll say that. But yes, keep asking your questions. Bring them on in. We have one. Well, we're going to take a break, right, Mandra? Yeah, take a little break and come back with one more question. Yes. Um, so we'll see you in a little bit. Hey, BA fam, it's Mandy Money here, aka Mandra. Listen, y'all, I want this to be the year when you finally learn how to be the badass negotiator that you have always wanted to be, whether you are plucking up your courage and trying to ask for a raise where you currently work, or you are ready to negotiate a damn good juicy offer from a new job. I am here for you. I have got a five-step signature salary negotiation strategy that I only teach in my free virtual Nail Your Negotiation negotiation masterclass. I've got one coming up in just a couple of weeks. You can sign up and save your spot at nailyournegotiation.com. That's nailyournegotiation.com. I can't wait to see y'all there. Hey, BA fam, this message is sponsored by Discover. Did you know you could reduce the number of unwanted calls and emails with online privacy protection? The latest innovation from Discover? Discover will help regularly remove your personal info, like your name and address, from 10 popular people search websites that could sell your data. And they'll do it for free. Activate in the Discover app. See terms and learn more at discover.com slash online privacy protection. And we're back. We have a um, a question. Oh, her name is Tiffany. Girl, I like that <laughs> name. Hey, girl. Um, hey. hey, ladies. I'm a huge fan of your podcast. Um, you all need a show like seriously. Okay. I have a fairly simple question. However, it's so hard for me to get by it. How do I find funding to start my business? I'm 27 and have no savings and I want to flip properties, but I have no money to start. Please help. Okay. Now, How do you squeeze blood from a stone? Um, I Tiffany? don't know if you've ever heard. <laughs> well, have you ever heard of house hacking, Mandra? Yeah, but I need a refresher. So Educate house me. hacking, young Tiffany. Mm, I love this 27. Oh, you're so <laughs> fresh and full of life. Um, <laughs> so house hacking is when you live in a house, ideally, um, ideally uh, like a multifamily house, let someone else pay the rent, you know, um, and then save from that place. So like, you know, you're saving on you not having to pay rent. Someone else is paying the mortgage for you. And then you use that money or, or you could even pull out money from that property to purchase the next property, you know? Mm. And so that's exactly that's, what producer Imani is doing right now. Exactly. And so I would, um, you know, like if you, the thing about purchasing at home is that you can use something called leverage, like 
leverage comes from the word lever and a lever is like a doorknob. So you think about this small little doorknob could open this big old door. How is that? Right. So the same thing with the way um, when you leverage your money in real estate, you don't have to come up with the full amount. Like I have purchased my properties, some of them cash, but you don't need to do that. You can literally leverage by, you know, um, putting down, giving it an FHA loan, putting down three and a half percent. So you don't have to put down the full five hundred thousand or two hundred thousand, whatever, maybe three thousand, four thousand, five thousand, which means you do have to save something you know, and then you use that leverage to purchase an asset that is much greater than what you initially invested. Patience, you know, maybe you fix it up while you're there, do a little something to it, find yourself some, you know, someone who's going to rent. And then, you know, after a couple of years, you're able to pull out some money from that property, as well as hopefully you've saved some of that rent money you're getting to then purchase the next thing. And so that's what I would suggest for you to start. There's some great, um, um, resources. So, um, many, some, I don't know if they're all United Way still do this, but some of them, you might want to look at your local United Way. Um, oftentimes they have something called an IDA program, an individual development account program. This is a program where you can, you take like a series of classes and, um, they, the United Way has partnered with a bank and some banks just do this on their own. So you can look for individual development account programs for, at different banks. And then they will pledge if you put a certain amount of money in um, and you take these courses or classes, they will then grant to you money like in multiples. So if you put up 500, they might say for every 500 you put up, we will um, uh, multiply times four. That's what the IDA program mm. that I used to teach. So literally when I was working at the United Way, people took my course. If they saved up to $500 at the end of the course, they got 2000, okay. which is great. Mm-hmm. And so like, so look for IDA programs. Another thing, there's NACA, N-A-C-A, love NACA. Um, the neighborhood, I forget what it stands for, but NACA, yeah, right. It's this on this nonprofit organization that helps um new homeowners purchase homes. So you can get a multifamily, I think up to four families with NACA, and NACA will typically help you lock in a much lower interest rate than any place else. And they commit for you to have no down payment. They really help with like no down payment, help with closing costs, and you get a lower interest rate than what's out there. And so look at for NACA programs. Um also, too, I would just consider like you need to start taking like um, these free first time home buyers courses to understand the home buying process in general. You know, like, you know, what is it? You know, um, what what is insurance going to look like? What is that going to look like? Um, should Property you? Property taxes. Yes. <laughs> um, but also, too, well, how do you get in a mortgage? Also, too, you're going to want to to connect with realtors in the area that you're considering purchasing because oftentimes realtors will have their ear to the street. Like, Oh, you know what? m and bank has a $20,000 $20, grant. This mm-hmm. bank has, you know, there are grants all over. And so I would say for the next, honestly, year to inundate myself with taking these courses, meeting with realtors, you know, um, reaching out to banks to see if they have any grant programs, um, doing your, you know, your, your research. And, um, if you do that before I start flipping, I would house hack and maybe consider doing some renting until I can get some money up to do the thing that you're wanting to do. Yeah. I'm curious because she says, um, she wants to save up money for her business, which I'm assuming is the house flipping. Should people who are thinking, I feel like house hacking, you know, you buy the, um, Mm -hmm. home under your own name and then rent it out. But that, excuse me, if you're wanting to then get into home flipping, do you get a business entity like an LLC and then you purchase under that entity? Um, or are people out there flipping houses just like as themselves? I mean, Does ideally you should definitely get an entity because you want to be protected. Um, anytime you okay. have a business, yes, including that kind of business. For someone who's never flipped before, I suggest hacking first because it's basically a slow flip. You know, you get someplace hopefully undervalued. Maybe you need some new toilets, blah, blah, blah. You're living there and fixing it up while you live there and learning, oh, don't work at that contractor. He's a thief. Oh, that's a really good painter. You're starting to build your team while you're house hacking. So when you finally get the money together, then, you know, and you have a team together, then you can consider flipping. I do not suggest flipping right off the bat unless you're partnered with an experienced flipper. And you're kind of like working side by yeah. side because you can do that too. Oftentimes these flippers have no admin assistance. They're a mess. So you might want to look for a flipper and offer your services to keep them organized so you can learn on the job. That's something you can consider too. Mm. 
And like start inundating, like Tiffany said, inundating, I forget what you said, with education around, mm-hmm. you know, the homeownership process. I'd also recommend like following blogs or TikToks for, from people who are in like doing it, doing mm-hmm. the thing that you want to be doing and just learning from their experience. I know blogs are so 2004, <laughs> but I remember Paula Pant from Afford Anything. Mm-hmm. She used to do this in Atlanta and I would read her blog and she was like very transparent about fixing up homes and living in them and renting them out and that whole process. And I, um, anyway, she has a podcast called Afford Anything. Also bigger pockets, I feel like is more mm-hmm. real estate um, investor focused. Yep. So maybe add those to rotation with Brown Ambition mm-hmm. um, as well. And give yourself time because it's it's not something you want to jump into. Yeah. You know, so I like that tips like house hack and make it a slow flip because mm-hmm. you're learning and, and all of that um, and saving, you know, and join these. There's like a ton of like Facebook groups. So you can kind of sit back and like listen and learn because I like mm-hmm. one of my friends, Christina, she she flips homes in St. Louis and um, they do meetups all over the country where they just talk to each other. They share information. So you really want to consider like, as I said, inundate for the next year, just inundate yourself with I'm part of this group. I joined this meetup. You know, I'm ready for my first house hack before you really start to like you're going to it's a very expensive process. So the more education you can have, because you're going to make mistakes and they're going to be pricey, but they can be reduced in price, you know, if you, if you take the time for education. So good luck to you, Tiffany. <laughs> That's Tiffany on Tiffany, y'all. <laughs> for BAQA. All right, BA fam. Again, if you want to submit your questions, you can hit us up at IG on IG. We're at Brown Admission Podcast. Oh, Brown Admission Podcast at gmail.com. Mm-hmm. If you want to email us or just head to our website, brownadmissionpodcast.com. Dot com. And contact us. But until next week. Bye, y'all. Bye. Hey, 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 BA fam. We're on YouTube. Woohoo. Thank you so much for watching. Please like this video and subscribe to the channel. And while you're at it, why don't you go over to that little bell icon and just tap that for us. Show the BA fam how much you love us. And that way you'll also get notifications when new videos drop. Also share the channel with a friend. We're always like tell a friend, tell a friend, tell a friend. And thank y'all so much again for all the support.